with each other. <laughs> no, there's enough of that going around. But this really has to do with confronting our beliefs. A couple of thousand years ago, one came with a wisdom and expressed that wisdom in a number of ways. Some understood, some still misunderstood. But one of the things that Jesus the Christ said was, as you believe, so is it unto you. And that was taken, and is still being taken, in whatever way that beliefs want to take it. As long as you have certain desires about how it ought to be, you can't see how it is. What do we do with that? Well, it can cause us to pause and to consider just how strongly we are affected by belief. Think about it now. When you were just a little bitty thing, maybe even forming inside your mother like a peanut, <laughs> you were being programmed. You were being programmed by the beliefs of your mother. You were being programmed by the sounds and the effects of things that then impacted you. So that you came into this world with already formulating beliefs. Beliefs about how things are, but being received through the energy of the belief. It's only as you make a shift inside yourself, and that's exactly what I'm encouraging you to, to do here today. Make a shift inside yourself. Because, you see, it is in you. It is in me. Any change that's going to occur. We have to first come to a place of looking within to discover that that is where our beliefs are actually housed. They dwell within us. We have grown so accustomed to them that we believe they are us when in reality they are simply things that we've taken on. They're like personalities. We have a work personality. We have a pet personality. We have a spouse personality. We have a friend personality. And with each one of those personality comes forth different beliefs about how we should be and how the others should be. As a matter of fact, how the world should be. We even go to that place of saying, I believe that you should be a certain way, I should be a certain way, and that the world should be a certain way. It's beliefs. And as long as we have that energy up and running, that desire, we cannot experience what actually is. And isn't that just disturbing as can be? That you will not conform to the way that I feel like you should be? <laughs> that I believe you should be? Just think in yourself right now. I'm, I'm encouraging you Apply a little self-honesty here. How much energy do you actually generate in resistance to what is? How much energy do you actually generate in attaching yourself to what isn't? To be non-resistant, to be non-attaching, a major degree of mastery is in play until you get to the place of being able to be present and in being present to actually confront these energies that are inside of us that are in the formation of judgments, of criticisms, of beliefs, of ideas. Because that's where they all are. But we have to be able to actually get inside ourselves 
and come to that place of seeing that as long as we are up and judging, we cannot possibly be present with what is. We always have that, instead of rose-colored glasses, judgment-colored glasses on. And everything is coming up, judge, judge, judge. We have to be able to take those off. We have to be able to release ourselves from our inner, our inner state of control. And it is a state of control. You look at it and you see how controlled you are when you allow these beliefs to dominate your choice making. Now, if you're happy with your beliefs, if you're happy with your life right now, then this message really isn't for you today. And it's okay, I understand it, I do. There are many times that I hear this message inside myself and there's another voice, another personality that says, oh, don't pay attention to that. I have to be present to be able to recognize what's going on inside of me that really doesn't have anything to do with who I truly am. And that's what we're getting to here, you see. There's a part of us that existed prior to our being birthed. A part of us who knew we were going to come into this incarnation and knew full well that many of the beliefs that we would take on would be taken on and we'd act them out, we'd live them out as if they were real and we'd come to the experiences that unconscious creators come to. Then, the opportunity is today keeps presenting itself and reasserting itself and in such an easy manner encourages us to practice being present and to go within so that in stillness and in silence we can actually experience our beliefs as beliefs instead of as who we have grown to believe we are. You see, in confronting our beliefs, we give ourselves an opportunity to see them for what they are, instead of assuming that they are who we are. And that's a big jump. And it's one that doesn't happen just in a jump. It happens in repeated steps of going within and choosing to, from within, allow ourselves to be present enough to then the authentic person, the authentic being to come forward. And the more we are able to associate with our true nature, our authentic self, the more opportunity we give ourselves to experience life as it is instead of as we believe it is. I know, because I'm right here with you, that I spend so much of my time listening to the voice inside my head tell me about this, that, and the other, that half of the time I'm sitting there unconsciously agreeing, and the other half of the time I'm saying, what a bunch of baloney. It really doesn't make any sense at all. It's like you have to give yourself permission and then take that permission and confront your beliefs, be present with yourself so that the one who is telling the lies no longer can tell a lie that you will believe and you will then find yourself on the path to your authentic nature. It's there. It's the one that is and was. It's the one that always will be. It's the one that is waiting our recognition. There are times that I have encountered my real self, just as I know there are times when you have encountered your real nature, your truer self. And in those times, there has been such a difference in your experience. One of it may be shocking. It got quiet. Instead of that incessant voice drumming away inside of you, you found that even with that background, you were able to be still. And in the stillness, you could experience the silence. And in the silence, 
you opened yourself up to, and in that moment, however long or short it was, you were able to experience life as it truly is. You were actually able to experience another person without believing them to be. You could experience them as they are, regardless of whether they were projecting a belief self upon you. You at least were able to experience it as it is. Think about it now. Where are we headed? This is the age of enlightenment, the age of Aquarius. This is where I and my father are one becomes a living reality. Don't you think that there's the remote chance that in order for that to occur, we have to move beyond our belief self? That that actually has to slip away and be put aside in order for us to become at one, consciously at one with who we truly are? And all of this that's going on around us, all of these distractions, When you're not witnessing them, believing them to be true, you begin to experience them in a much different way. Their effect upon you is changed entirely. In many instances, their effect is diminished to a state of nothingness. So, start living as if you don't know how to live. Nobody is there to teach you. No guidelines exist. No books exist on how to say to do this, how to do that. You are just left alone on an island. Everything is available. Intelligence is within you. Instinct is within you. Intellect is within you. Now, start moving. Thank you. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.